Welcome to the first of this week's MTV Coca-Cola Reports. And coming up today, we'll be taking a look at the brand new video from Erasure and the not so brand new retro video from Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Now, Tom Petty is currently winding up a European tour and tonight you could see him in Paris at the Zenith. It's gig definitely recommendable. But if you want to find out about other bands on the road in the near future, then do stick around for our intern guide coming up right after this. And this is the latest release from Vince Clark and Andy Bell. It's Erasure and Breath of Life. soon in the form of the latest headlines from the news team but right now here's a look at some tour dates from the in-town guides starting with Cher yes pop's cheekiest performer returns to Europe next month for a string of live dates starting at Berlin's Deutschlandhalle on the 15th of April and then on the 16th it's Hamburg at the Sporthalle München is the next stop on the 20th at the Olympia Halle and then on the 21st she plays the first of two nights at Wien's Stadthalle. On the 24th you can share the experience at the Zenith in Paris for one night only. Yes, they're hip and they're happening and they're the brand new heavies. If you want to see the latest soul sensation from London, you can catch them at the Neuchâtel New York Club on the 10th of April or the Bernisch Stuffenbau on the 11th. And on the 13th of April, it's the new morning in Paris. Dire Straits' record-breaking world tour continues on the 19th of April with a night at the Metz Galaxy and then on the 20th and 21st it's the Al Tony Garnier in Lyon. Grenoble follows on the 22nd at the Palais des Sports and then they take a day off before starting a week-long residency at the Omnisport Bercy in Paris on the 24th. ELO are back and you can see them live in Germany on the 3rd of May at the Düsseldorf Philippshalle and then on the 4th it's Osnabrück at the Stadthalle. On the 5th it's Frankfurt at the Jahrhunderthalle and then on the 6th the electric-like orchestra play Hannover's musical. All right and we'll be back with more tour dates tomorrow but right now here's a look at some of the biggest news stories from the world of rock and roll. Queen are remaining silent about what exactly will happen at the Freddie Mercury Tribute Concert on April 20th. The event, which will be rock's biggest charity event since Live Aid, features artists including Guns N' Roses, Elton John and David Bowie. But it is not yet known what songs the band will be performing or in what order they will play. The three remaining members of Queen will play together, but they say they do not see it as a Queen concert. They added that although they may continue to work together, it would not be under the name of Queen. Today, Wet 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 released a new single, More Than Love, the follow-up to their European hit, Goodnight Girl. The new song continues the wet, smooth Scottish blend of soul and pop. The acclaimed indie band Curve are set to bring their dense guitar sonics to Europe next month. The band are currently touring the UK, promoting their album, Doppelganger. That's it for the headlines. Now, back to Christiana. Erasure started today's show with their latest video based on Lewis Carroll's fantasy story, Alice in Wonderland. Now, our second clip today has a similar theme, and it comes from Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Now, Tom's first experience of the music business came when he was just seven years old. Elvis Presley was on location near his hometown in Florida, filming Follow That Dream. Tom visited the set, and that inspired him to form his first band, The Sundowners. By 1976, the first Heartbreakers record was out, and years of touring paid off with international success. Now, if you've caught any of his recent shows, then you're very lucky, and you might recognize the stage set, which features some of the props in this video clip. Taken from 1985, this is Don't Come Around Here No More. <laughs>
that's just about it for today's show, but keep your letters and cards coming in and here is the address to write to in case you didn't already know. The MTV Coca-Cola Report, PO Box 1384, London, NW1, OHW, and that's in England. And we'll be back with more from the report tomorrow with a look at Adamski's latest partner in crime and the song that launched a career for pop star Seal. Keep it here for MTV at the Movies and I'll see you real soon. Das Vidanya. <laughs>back to the weekdays or in particular week nights and tonight all the stars come out in tinseltown usa yes it is the 64th academy awards to you and me the oscars and mtv has been getting you ready for the big night all weekend the stars are right now ironing their shirts and spraying on their ball gowns 
And there's just time for one more look at the major category at this year's Oscars, that of Best Picture. First up, Bugsy, with its ten nominations, including a Best Actor nod for Ray's new best friend, Warren Beatty. I'm laying the groundwork. Having a good time, huh? Enjoying yourself, huh? You like that robe, huh? Man! I don't know if you're hurt, but you're one lucky son of a bitch are alive. I give you three minutes to get your little panties on and get the hell out of here. My brother, you psychotic ass! Jenny, do you really expect me to fall for that? I don't care what you fall for. I only care that you get psychiatric help and that you never come around here bothering us anymore. Us! Us! I live on the uh, He's my brother! I am! Oh, I am. Right, Stop right. it! Could you show me some form of identification, please? Do you have any? It's in my pants in the in the guest bathroom. Jesus. I'm sorry, he does very unexpected things. Are you hurt? Are you cut anywhere? Any glass wedged anywhere? Oh God. You're right. You're Chick. You're her brother. Why didn't you tell me it was Chick? Chick. Chick. Uh, I'm a buy a Cadillac, Chick. All right. And of course, in part, that role requires little acting from Warren Beatty, as he's currently in love with his co-star and wife, Annette Benning. They're as in love as the characters they play on the screen. Anyway, well done, Warren, and of course, to director Barry Levinson, and good luck for tonight. Staying with the Best Picture nominations, next up is JFK. And for those of you who don't know what this film is about, where have you been? All you need to know is that director Oliver Stone has broken new ground in his telling of a most intriguing tale. This is JFK up for Best Picture. We should be investigating our mafia leads here in New Orleans. Now, I can buy that a hell of a lot easier than I can the government. Ruby is all mob, knows Oswald, sets him up. Hoffa, Traficante, Marcellus, they hire some guns to do Kennedy. And uh, the government doesn't want to open up a whole can of worms there because it used a mob to try to get to Castro. You know, Castro being assassinated by the mob, by us, it sounds pretty wild to junk you, citizen. So they close the book on JFK. Makes perfect sense to me. I don't doubt their involvement, Bill, but at a lower level. Oh, come on. Could the mob change the parade route, Bill? Or eliminate the protection for the president? Could the mob send Oswald to Russia and get him back? Could the mob get the FBI, the CIA, and the Dallas police to make a mess of the investigation? I mean, could the mob get the Wall Commission appointed to cover it up? Could the mob wreck the autopsy? I mean, could the mob influence the national media to go to sleep? And since when has the mob used anything but 38s for hits up close? Mob wouldn't have the guts or the power for something of this magnitude. Assassins need payrolls. Schedules, times, orders. This was a military-style ambush from start to finish. This was a coup d'etat with Lyndon Johnson waiting in the wings. Oliver Stone's JFK. Controversial stuff and, incidentally, Ray Cokes's pick for Best Director at tonight's Academy Awards. But right now, I'm here to tell you who's up for the big one, and that is the Oscar for Best Picture. Jonathan Demme is in the race with his chilling study into the mind of the serial killer in Silence of the Lambs. He directs fellow Oscar nominees Jodie Foster and Anthony Hopkins through some fairly harrowing scenes. Incidentally, this is the first horror or thriller film to be up for a major Oscar, not for the squeamish Silence of the Lambs. Doctor, we don't have any more time for any of this now. But we don't reckon time the same way, do we, Clarice? This is all the time you'll ever have. Later, now please listen to me. We've only got five... No, I will listen now. After your father's murder, you were orphaned. You were ten years old. You went to live with cousins on the sheep and horse ranch in Montana. And? And one morning, I just ran away. Not just, Clarice. What set you off? You started at what time? Early. It's still dark. Then something woke you, didn't it? Was it a dream? What was it? I heard a strange noise. What was it? Screaming. Some kind of screaming, like a child's voice. What did you do? I went downstairs, outside. 
I crept up into the barn. I was so scared to look inside, but I had to. What did you see, Clarice? What did you see? Lambs. They were screaming. They were slaughtering the spring lambs. And they were screaming. From Jonathan Demme directing and starring the co-nominated Jodie Foster and England's Anthony Hopkins, they're all up in Silence of the Lambs. Next on the Best Picture nominee list, something for all the family, The Prince of Tides. Barbara Streisand directs Nick Nolte, herself and Kate Nelligan through a man's struggle to find himself. Most of the cast seems to be nominated this year, so let's see what the fuss is about. The Prince of Tides. It's about a journey uh, of, uh, in this case, a man, which I'm also fascinated by men and their journeys. Here's a man who's never really looked back at his past. And what I love about this picture is that he learns to do that. It's a real interesting story. It's a man that has to come to grips with his past, and he does this surprisingly through his relationships with women and explores his relationship with his mother. You have to be patient with me, love. You've done a lot to piss me off. His sister, his wife, and his sister, psychiatrist, who becomes his lover, too. How's my sister? She's out of physical danger, but... What do you want from me? Information. I, I need you to be her memory, in a sense, and, and uh, fill in the missing details. <laughs> I spent my life trying to forget those missing details. Turn that thing down. I was watching it. This movie is about love, the love between husbands and wives, the love between parents and children, lovers, brothers and sisters, and ultimately it's about loving oneself, about learning to love oneself and appreciate oneself. The thought of falling in love terrifies me. Then let's just be friends. Very good friends. Barbara Streisand's Prince of Tides in the running for Best Picture at tonight's 64th Academy Awards. Something else in the running, and what an unusual race it is, Disney's Beauty and the Beast. It's the first time an animated feature has been nominated for a major award, not to mention three nominations in the most original song category. So what am I going to play now? Yes, a song from the movie. This is Disney doing what it does best. Ma chère mademoiselle, it is with deepest pride and greatest pleasure that we welcome you tonight. And now, we invite you to relax, let us pull up a chair, as the dining room proudly presents your dinner. Be our guest. Be our guest. Put our service to the test. Tie your napkin round your neck, sherry, and we provide the rest. Soup du jour, hot hors d'oeuvre. Why, we only live to serve. Try the gray stuff. It's delicious. Don't believe me? Ask the dishes. They can sing, they can dance. After all, miss, this is France. And a dinner here is never second best. Go on, unfold your menu. Take a glance and then and you'll be our guest, we our guest, be our guest. Beef ragu, cheese souffle, pie and pudding on flambe. We'll prepare and serve with flair a culinary cabaret. You're alone and you're scared, but the banquet's all prepared. No one's gloomy or complaining while the flatware's entertaining. We tell jokes, I do tricks with my fellow candlesticks. Put it all in work, it tastes that you can Come on and lift your glass, you've won your own free pass to be our guest. If you're stressed, it's fine dining we suggest. Be our guest, be our guest, be our guest. Oh, you don't have to be a kid to enjoy Beauty and the Beast, but you do have to wait till much later in the year for it to be released in Europe. Well, that's the last of our Oscar previews. At this point, I'd just like to say, may the best films win. Stay tuned for news at night, and I'll leave you with a quick home video recommendation. That's Backdraft. See you all tomorrow. Gentlemen, gentlemen, gentlemen. I think it appropriate that we recognize the two probationary firemen <laughs> among us today who were officially baptized into the world of old man fire. 
first to Tim. Despite the fact that he was born with a rather dull expression and a really hideous pair of ears, <laughs> he not only took on a beast, but pulled from its clutches, assisted by a more famous and brilliant firefighter, <laughs> me, <laughs> a kicking and screaming civilian who will probably wind up suing us for breaking our fingernails. <laughs> and to Brian. Healthy Santos. His own contribution was both more beautiful and less likely to sue. <laughs> you know, when I heard that both McCaffrey brothers were being assigned here at this station together at the same time, my heart... Oh,